Hello and welcome to a new video on the Crypto2 YouTube channel. In this video, I want to show you how you can create an encrypted video chat using Crypto2. I structured this video into different parts. In the first part, I want to give you a motivation why you should encrypt your traffic that go through the internet. Then I want to show you how encryption using a pre-shared key based on a password works. Then I want to show you how you can encrypt your traffic using the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. In fact, I will not show you the details of the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. If you're interested in how it actually works, you should have a look at the video that I made about Diffie-Hellman key exchange. And finally, I want to show you two different templates in Crypto2 that perform an encrypted video and audio chat with a pre-shared key and one with Diffie-Hellman. Communication that goes through the internet can be eavesdropped everywhere. For instance, we have here Alice and Bob who wants to communicate over the internet. So the internet is this blurry cloud here in the middle. Then Alice has her internet service provider, which is called here ISP1, and Bob has his internet service provider called ISP2. So Alice is connected to the internet using ISP1, and Bob is connected to the internet using ISP2. And the communication from Alice to Bob and vice versa goes to the first ISP, then through the internet and of course your communication can take different routes. So for instance, this route here or another route or a totally different route. And even during your communication, these routes can change based on what the routers on the way between Alice and Bob decide how they want to route the packets. And then in the end, it goes through ISP2 to Bob. And of course, on each position here and on each of the steps here, on ISP1, on the internet, or on ISP2, they could sit an eavesdropper. For instance, Eve could capture packets at ISP1 and just look into these and read what Alice is writing, or she could sit somewhere in the internet, or she could sit at ISP2. And we cannot trust anyone who is on the route between Alice and Bob to fight against Eve that she's not able to read our communication, what do we have to do? We have to encrypt the complete traffic. So Alice encrypts her data, then sends it through the complete internet over ISP1, ISP2 to Bob. And Eve, of course, can intercept the packets, for instance, but she cannot read since these are encrypted. So there are two different methods to do so. First, Alice and Bob could share a key based, for instance, on a password. And of course, they have to agree before communication on that secret key K. So Alice has her key K and Bob has the same key K. And then the communication that goes from Alice to Bob is encrypted using this shared key. And the encryption, for instance, is done using symmetric encryption, for instance, AES. But of course, the problem here is that Alice and Bob have to meet before communication to exchange this key here. And to tackle the problem of meeting before the communication, we have the other possibility. We have here Diffie-Hellman key exchange, for instance. Alice and Bob use asymmetric cryptography to agree on a key. And then they use symmetric encryption based on this agreed key. And instead of directly communicating over the internet, they first use Diffie-Hellman and agree on a common secret key K. And this is possible while everyone is listening. And how this works, as I already said, you should have a look at my video about Diffie-Hellman key exchange that I made in the Basics of Cryptology series. But keep in mind, even using Diffie-Hellman only is vulnerable to a man in the middle attack because Eve could sit here in the middle somewhere and she could perform Diffie-Hellman with Alice and she could also perform Diffie-Hellman with Bob. And to Alice, she says she's Bob and to Bob, she says she's Alice. So Alice thinks she communicates with Bob, establishing a common key, and Bob thinks he's communicating with Alice, agreeing on the same key. So Eve, in the end, has a key with Alice, and Eve has a key with Bob, and so she's the man in the middle, and the encryption goes from Alice to Eve. Eve can read everything, and then the other part of the, uh, of the communication goes from Eve to Bob, and so she can read everything that Bob sends to Alice and Alice sends to Bob. To counter this attack, 
we have to use another layer, for instance, RSA with public and private keys. And, but this is not part of this video here now. Now let's come directly to Crypto2 and have a look how you can implement an AES encrypted video chat using Crypto2, for instance, with a pre-shared key and also with Diffie-Hellman. I'm here now in Crypto2 and I want to show you how you can create your own AES encrypted video and audio chat. To do so, we have two different templates and we first search for video. And then we have the Diffie-Hellman AES video audio chat and we have the simple video and audio chat using AES encryption. And this is the first one I want to show you. So you just double click on this and then you get this nice template here. So what do we have here? First of all, we have a camera component that can capture and show pictures from your webcam. And then on this side here, we have a picture output and this is used to display the picture of the other communication partner. And then we have a lot of different other components here. Let's go first to the audio part. Here we have the microphone component that captures your local microphone. And then you have the speaker component here. And this is used to play back the audio received from the other part. Then these two data streams, the video and the audio stream here, go directly into two different AES components. And the AES components use a key, and this is a pre-shared key here. And here we use Pika CS5 to generate from the given password a cryptographic key for our AES here. Then these AES components give the encrypted data to two network components for sending the webcam and sending the audio. And then finally, we have here an IP address. And this IP address is the IP address of the one we want to communicate with. And on the right side here, we also have two network components that receive data from the other party. Then we have two AES components for decryption of the data. And these AES components use, of course, the same pre-shared key. And then the decrypted data go to the picture output here showing the webcam and the audio goes to the speaker component. And as you can see here, I right now use the IP address 127.0.0.1. This is the local loopback address. And when you use this address here, then this workspace connects to itself. And in a minute, I will start this. And then, of course, you will see me here on the left side locally. And then you will see also me here on the right side, which is the received webcam locally. So let's try it. And as, can, as you can see here, I'm sitting here right now. And this here is my webcam. And this here is also the picture of my local webcam here, where I receive the data from this webcam here over this workspace here. But clearly, we can also use this workspace here. I will just stop it now. Clearly, we can use this workspace here over the network. To do so, I have my laptop in another room of my house here and I enter the IP address of this laptop now. This is 192.168.0.80. And I will start my workspace here. Then I will go in the other room and also start the same workspace on the laptop. But before I do so, I have to give you some additional information. You can use this workspace here in your local network, but you could also use this over the internet. To do so, you have to open a port or not only one port, you have to open two ports that you forward to the machine running this workspace here. And when you have a look at the settings of the sending components here, you see two ports. You have 1001 and you have 1002. You can, of course, change these ports to whatever you want, but of course, on the receiver side here, you have to use the same ports here, 1001 and 1002. The used network protocol here is UDP, and this has to be kept. You could also change it to TCP, but this won't work since we send complete frames or complete pictures here that are AES encrypted in a single packet, in a single UDP packet. If we use TCP, which is a stream-based connection, <laughs> then we, the workspace would not know 
where the picture ends or where the AES stream of a single picture ends and so it won't work here. So you have to keep UDP. So now let's test this workspace on my local network. So I start it here and then you will only see the camera here and here we will see nothing. And as you can see, you can see me again. And I will now go in the other room and start my laptop and connect to this computer here. So see you in a minute. So I'm back again here, I stopped the other computer or the, the Trip22 workspace sending the webcam information. But as you have seen, you can establish an audio video chat over the local network. But as I already said, you could also do this over the internet. Now I want to show you how you can also establish a video audio chat, but using Diffie-Hellman. And to open the Diffie-Hellman key exchange workspace, you just double click in the start center here on Diffie Hellman AES video audio chat. And this workspace is quite complex. So the first part here looks quite familiar. So it looks like the workspace for the pre-shared key encryption based communication. But instead of having here a password that is used to generate the cryptographic key, we have this session key and the session key is agreed on using Diffie-Hellman. And here below this first part, you have two different parts. And I don't want to go into detail of this protocol implementation here, but the left part is the sending part, the right part is the receiving part, and these two parts here agree on a common key. And for instance, when you have a look at the details of the Diffie-Hellman key exchange video, you probably know what a generator is and so on. But when you want to change the values here, for instance, the prime numbers and so on, you can do this here using the prime number generating components. Let's go back up. And now I want to start this workspace here. And what you will see is that you have my webcam image here. You have my received webcam image here. This workspace also co connects to itself. And you will see that here's a randomly generated session key using Diffie-Hellman. So let's try it. And as I said, you saw me here on the web webcam and you saw me here on the picture output that was the received one and you have the session key here. And when you restart the workspace, you will see that we have a different session key. So every time we restarted this here, we got a different session key. So you can use now Crypto2 to create your own video and audio chat, for instance, on your local LAN, or you could do this over the internet, but then keep in mind that you have to open the ports to do so. And this is everything that I wanted to show you in this short video. I hope you liked it. If yes, please give a thumbs up. If no, you know what to do, give a thumbs down. And if you are not yet a subscriber of our channel, I would be really happy if you do so, since this really helps us to grow the channel to make Crypto2 more popular. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.